Hi, this is Learn With Me, where I try to write a subgenre of music I've not tried to write before. Over the weekend, I was doing a daytime DJ set, mostly playing soul and funk with the occasional funky house song. Now, funky house is a genre I like to listen to, I like to DJ it, but I've never tried to write it before, so that's what I'm going to attempt to do today. The characteristics are usually four on the floor drums, funk inspired bass lines, drum breaks inspired by the 1970s and 80s, and sometimes featuring samples from classic disco and funk songs. Artists such as Federico Scavo, Wampa, Dateless, Ivan K, and Block and Crown are just some of the artists I've listened to for inspiration. I'll be using Ableton Live for this session. So what I'm gonna to do to start off with is get a 808 kit in there, and I'm just gonna program a closed hi-hat. Just loop that. I'm also gonna set the tempo to one, two, eight, because Funky House usually sits around there, but sometimes 125 to 130 I found. In fact, let's push it up to 130. Now we've got that, I really want to add in, just get on the bass straight away and try to come up with something funky and then we'll work everything else around that. So in terms of sound for the bass, I'm going to use Guitar Rig 6 and select input as bass. Oh, genres. Let's put funk and soul and see what presets are like. A little bit too distorted. Desert funk. Mm. I like the noise this amp generates. It's quite nice, and it disappears when you see you play. Yeah, let's go with that for now. And let's just jam along to that little hi-hat. Something like that's kind of interesting. Um, Getting there. Let's try to go lower actually, rather than using the A string. Mm, I like that. I should just mention I'm not like a funk bass player, so any players out there that are really good at funk bass, I apologize. <laughs> I should record something along the lines of that, and we can go from there. Okay, I like that as the intro, and then I'll do another slide to go into kind of the, the drop or first drop. Just for neat's sake, I'm going to put this start at the fourth bar. Bring in a kick when the drop happens. And let's try record this in. Okay, I quite like those notes, but I want to try. I want to try get something a bit more interesting. So, hmm. Okay, that. Let's do. Let's go with that. Okay, let's leave it like that. I think what would be cool is if we have a little open hi-hat on that seventh bar and then close it straight away on that last part. Let's lower the velocities because that's a little bit harsher than that. 
that first time round was really tight, so I'm just going to copy that for the first three. And then... I think what I'm going to do now is let's look back at the drums because it's not the right sound, I don't think. We want quite a hard, basically like a house kick drum. Okay, I like the snare and hi-hat in this one. But that, that kick is not right. Let's add in the snare as well for this drop. What about the rim shot? Okay, and then let's start a, let's use this second MIDI channel just for the kick drop. Let's use the 707 for the kick for now. I think I'm going off that noise with the bass. Let's have another look at the sound for the bass. The main fundamentals, I think anyways, um, of Funky House seem to be the drums and the bass, so we need to get them sounding a lot better. So let's look at the bass sound. Let's just solo it. Gonna lower the low end. And I do want to get rid of that noise, I think. I'm going to add the Waves NS1 to this bass, because this is actually this is actually kind of meant for uh, speech and vocals, but yeah, it's actually really good noise suppressor for a lot of things, so just add this to it. You hear the difference, that's amazing. If turn it off, turn it on. And that's nice, makes it a lot cleaner. So I bet for the intro, it's going to sound nicer as well. It doesn't really sound like Funky House yet, but I, I quite like where it's going. For these drums, I want to add the isotope vinyl. And let's put it down to 19. That's pretty cool. Let's lower the dust because that's a little bit loud at the minute. Push the warp up a little bit because that's given that kind of cool vinyl sound. Also add a noise gate to the bass as well. It's built in gate. For this intro, let's add some vinyl static and Ableton does have one because we used it in one of the other videos. I actually quite like this kick. Let's add a new audio channel and actually use this as the kick because it sounds good. I like when you, something's found by accident. I was looking for vinyl sound and I found a cool kick. Let's have a listen to that. Wow, that's hot. Turn that down a bit. So I just realized that the interface had a little bit of an issue and I was capturing everything in mono, but I fixed that now, so we will have it in stereo. So if you hear something slightly different with the audio now, that is why. Where were we? We were gonna add vinyl static to the track. I like these cowbells as well. Let's have it just on the offbeat. And let's just have it really low in the mix as well. And I'm changing that cowbell to match the bass line. That's sounding cool, I like that. Let's just copy this all the way around. And now let's go back to finding that vinyl static. Okay, here we are. So I'm going to use, probably just for the intro, I'm going to use one of these. Let's create a new audio track. Just loop this until the drop. Turn it way down. What I want to do is, let's add the isotope vinyl to the bass line as well, and then have it only just for the intro. 
Mm, that's cool. Turn dust off because we've already got that on the drum track. And then have it drop out for that slide. So let me just first automate the vinyl plugin to cut out. And then we have it come off for that slide. And we'll take the static out for that slide as well. I kind of want to keep the static in there. So we just have it for when the cowbell plays maybe. Might be quite cool. So it's almost like the cowbells cut up like a sample. It might sound kind of cool. Hmm, I quite like that. That's kind of funky. Yeah, it's like adding a nice little musical texture there, which is quite cool. Now I'm thinking about it. Funky House actually uses a lot of claps rather than snares, so let's switch out the snare for a claps. I'm gonna look at the samples, actually, and look for claps and see what we can get. It's a 505 hand clap, let's use that. Yeah, that's sounding a bit better. All the samples we've got, so the kick sample, the hand sample, and the cowbell sample. What I wanna do is group these together and then I'm actually going to get the vinyl plugin that we put on the original hi hat and snare. I'm going to cut that and put this on top of the group. And that, I love what that warp's doing as well. It's really kind of changing the pitch and making it sound like an old vinyl. And I want to add a bit of reverb to this as well. Well, let's try echo. Put that on the whole group. I've lowered the, uh, the wet signal so it's less affected. Let's change the... Change that to triplets rather than dotted. Lower the wet a bit more. Why is this not moving? ping-pong on, which flat, flats it between the left and right. That's sounding cool. What I want to do is add a compressor to the bass line and sidechain it with that kick that we have. I want the glue compressor, sidechain the 707 kit, push the threshold up, or lower the threshold, sorry. That's sounding cool. It's a little, quite a little bit more subtle than it was before. Let's maybe get rid of the cowbell and have that come in for the second repeat. I think that's an okay start for now. Uh, I'm going to jump on the Korg monologue and just see what I can come up with sound-wise. Let's go through some of the presets on here. I'm thinking that for the for the intro would be quite cool. Let's um let's play this song. For the for just the intro. I think that sounds quite cool, just like a little intro part. Alright, let's record that in.
wasn't the tightest thing in the world, but let's see what we can do with that. Let's just quantize this and see how it works with that. It's not exactly how I played it, but let's go with it. I think this would actually be over this first bit. Put it fading as well. In fact, what I want to do, because the sound of this is bugging me a little bit, and I want to add the Baby Audio Super VHS, which I've used in every video, I think. You've got like a slight overdrive, a reverb, and then this drift effect, which kind of wobbles the pitch in and out, which is really cool. And then there's the magic button, which really widens the signal. So I'm first going to enable that. Put some heat on there. Push that drift up a little bit too. And I also want to add a low cut to that as well. Make it quite thin sounding. Cut it out for when the uh, bass slide happens. I think what I'd like to do now is add some percussive elements, maybe some like congas. I'm going to try to find some samples that are built into Ableton, and hopefully there will be some. So let's search for conga. I like these little conga chops here. Let's create a new audio channel and bring these in. What else have we got? Quite like that one as well. Let's just solo this and just get four bars looping, see what we can come up with. Just getting some of these empty noises and just filling the gaps in. Let's hear that in context. Sounds pretty cool, but the tuning isn't right. So what I'm gonna do is just copy this over here, just so we've got the original samples, deactivate them, and then cons consolidate all this, which will create new audio. Now we can change the tuning of the whole sample now. sitting better now, I think. And let's add a low cut to that, because there's quite a lot of low end going on. I'm gonna put delay on there. I'm gonna use Baby Audio's Comeback Kid. Just lower the level quite a bit. Let's look at the pitch again. Yeah, let's have the pitch low initially, and then when the cowbell comes in, we'll pitch it up. And let's get this cord part over here, which I think changed a bit, and let's just remove some elements. Let's maybe take the bass out, actually. Let's take that out as well. Let's just have that. Let's just change it to like this, like it's a little stop. Move every element that's after that little bit. And then bring everything back in. Mm, I like that without the synth part as well as the next drop. That's cool. Now, I think I want to change the intro so we start off with a beat. So I'm going to move everything a couple of bars across. So then what I want to do is grab, let's grab this, the pitched up 
new percussive section that we kind of added in. Let's just start building an intro. For the bass, I'm going to add the Waves Magma BB Tubes, which is a again a plugin I've used on every video. It's a tube saturator, and it's just very good. Okay, let's go back to this intro. Maybe let's tease that little bass slide. Maybe let's tease a little cowbell just before that kick comes in. Cool, yeah, that's got it's kind of a cool little intro, a little build up, a little drop, and then it kicks in. So now what I want to do is add some guitar on here. Now I'm not well versed on playing funk guitar, but I'm definitely going to be uh, blagging this one a little bit. And for the sound, I'm using the Architect Cory Wong VST, which is fantastic. I actually got it originally because I've never heard such a clean guitar VST before. And that's the reason why I got it. And some of the uh, effects built into it are really nice too. I'm going to play the track and just jam along to it for now, see what we can get. I think maybe initially I might just play the, the bass part on guitar, but just palm mute it. Let's just record that in for now, so we've got it and we can layer, layer it up. And we'll have the guitar come in when the drop happens. I liked how I liked I preferred the ring out of those notes the last so we'll use that last take. All right, let's try do a second guitar over that. Pretty happy with that. I think you know, these are all kind of demos and stuff and if I actually like the song I'll just re-record everything. It's not going to be perfect this time round. Right. Let's see what else we can come up with. For now, I don't think. I mean, it's it's not perfect, but I kind of like it. So let's just record that for now. I think what I want to do is have it open up a little bit, so it starts off palm muting, and then by the end of the by the end of the, the sixteen bars. I it's like a slow build up. Actually, that worked really well in that little break. That was <laughs> that worked perfectly. Again, another accidental thing, but it worked. Right, let's go for this bit just after drop and see what we can come up with. <laughs>
like that. Let me just record that before I forget it. <laughs> Actually, I was meant to go up there, but I quite, I quite like that. I'm gonna record that in. Mm. I need to figure out those last chords. Yeah, I think that could probably work. Let me just record that, just that final bit, and we can just stitch the other bits together. Right, let's uh, put the guitar down for a sec and let's stitch this together. Let's put a low cut on it. Try this. What's this? Oh, okay. It's like a um, flange. Add a little bit of that. I quite like it. And let's hear it in context. I think that second time around, let's just copy that for that first bit because it was slightly tighter. Let's remove that higher guitar, the first. In fact, let's have it for the first two. So there's a bit of variation in there, so. Yeah. Start off with that lower guitar, then that cowbell comes in, and then the higher guitar comes on the third time around, the fourth time around, everything, so I've got a few things, a few of the elements drop out, and then we have that second drop with that new guitar part as well. Now, I don't know if there's actually true funk guitar or not, but it's fun to play and I definitely want to do more of it. I think what I'm gonna do is add another drop at the end here. Probably go back to this, this section again. Let's copy all that. And then we'll go back to this section again. But this time round, we'll add in the synth part as well. I wonder what it's like if we add in a snare for this final, this final drop. Hmm, that's sounding cool. Maybe like an open hi-hat as well. Oh, bit much, close hi-hat. Add in that hi-hat, open hi-hat on the offbeat. I think what I wanna do as a final touch is Get some OP1 on there. Like try just find some textural things that we can add over the top. I've got it going through the Avalan Avalanche Run which is a delay pedal by Earthquake Devices. I've pretty much used it in every video, I think. And that sounds really nice. That sounds lovely. Let's see what we can come up with. I'm just gonna loop one of these sections. that in and then push it up an octave the second time round.
something like that, that'll do. And then while I've got this all set up, I'm gonna try go further in the that last drop and try find another sound. Quite like that sound actually. Let's just have a quick jam along to this and see what we can maybe come up with. Something like that sounds sounds cool. Right, let's just get this recorded in. I think that's a good um, that's a good final element. I think. All right, let's quickly clean all this up. I think that last take was probably better. I might I keep, I'm going to keep that last little bit in there because I quite liked that. In fact, let's look at the the first stuff I recorded. <laughs> Also pan the guitars and let's also pan some of these percussive elements. In fact, for this second this little let's add loads of reverb to it, and I'm gonna use the baby audio spaced out plugin, which is an awesome reverb, and I'm pretty sure I've used it in every video. Let's just put on out space, let's have it really. Let's also add the spaced out to the other OP1 channel as well. Let's add a little kick drum in that break as well. Maybe for that second time round we can bring this second OP1. So I think I'm going to leave it there. I think it's a good start. I've probably spent about an hour and a half to maybe, probably more like two hours actually. Uh, getting to this point. Um, all I've done is add the Waves GW mix centric to the master channel, which is like a one knob mastering tool. Um, but let's have a listen.
So I, I like it. It's it's cool. I don't know if it fits into the the funky house genre, but it's definitely funky. I think what's lacking is probably the drums. I think that's probably the thing. It's weakest point. They're not they're not housey enough. But I do like it. Um, I think with, an, with more time, it probably could fit more into that genre. Um, but let me know what you think. I appreciate all the comments so far, and um, I always like feedback as well. Like I mentioned before, I'm not that well versed in playing funk on bass or guitar, but it's been really fun. With every video, I'm trying to improve my terminology and talk about my process, because sometimes I might get lost in just tweaking things and I'm not explaining it. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments, um, whether you like the song or where I could improve. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.